the science of feeding tomorrow. Pathway Intermediates. Uh, good morning and good evening. My name is Daniel Son, and I'm so honored to be with you today. And also I thank Pathway Intermediates to give me an opportunity to talk about how to reduce and even how to remove fish meal in animal diets. Today, many of you are from Asia and Australia. Some of you are from North and South America, like USA, Canada, Mexico, Colombia, Peru, Chile, and Brazil, and Europe, Spain, and Germany. It's 8 to 9 o'clock in the evening in US, and 3 o'clock in the morning in Spain. I particularly thank European team and uh, American team joining us today. Okay, these days, lots of people are talking about how to reduce, even how to remove fish meal from the diets. I think mainly because of limited fish meal production and the subsequent fish meal price. Fish meal production continues to decrease. Back in 1999, and uh, back in 2000, it was 7 million tons. But 2015, only 4.8. fish meal production decreases over time. You are seeing a global price of fish meal by year. Okay, let's look at the 2000. It was 420 US dollars per ton. What about 2015? Almost 1800. Fish meal prices continue to go up as time goes by. You are seeing global fish meal usage in animal fees. Let's go to 1980 first, 40 years ago. About 90% of fish meal was used in poultry and swine diets. At that time, only 10% was used in aquaculture diets. What about 2011? Swine and poultry diets use one third of fish meal produced, and the aquaculture diets use the remaining two thirds. Okay. Price gap between fish meal and soybean meal widens as time goes by. As you can see from this slide, wild capture has been stagnant from, from 1985 to now, maybe in the future as well. However, aquaculture production continues to grow. And therefore, fish meal replacement is needed to maintain growth of aquaculture. With the global wild fish supply stagnant and the human population increasing, new research shows that Farmed fish 
and the shellfish production will lead to increase by 133 percent between 2010 and 2015 in order to meet projected fish demand worldwide. You are seeing a uh, fish meal usage in salmon diets and shrimp diets. Let's go to the salmon diet first. Back in 2000 and 2005, as you can see, over, around 30% of fish meal was used in shrimp diets. At that time, all seed meal almost zero. But 2020 now, as you can see, fish meal is about 13%. But on the other hand, all seed meal about 20%. Shrimp has the similar trend as salmon diets. This is fish meal usage in aquaculture 2015 data. Ears 38% fish meal, trout salmon 16, freshwater crustaceans 12, Marine shrimp 12, catfish, milkfish 3, tilapia 2, and carp 1. But now, some companies, they do not use any fish meal in some herbivorous, maybe some omnivorous fish diets as well. Okay, many people say soon fish meal will be no longer the main protein of the aquaculture diets. And so fish diets without the fish meal will soon become popular. Do you all agree to this? Not now, maybe in the future, maybe in the near future. Okay, not all fish meals are born the same. In other words, there are several grades of fish meal in terms of quality, okay? So you are seeing quality of fish meal. HQ means high quality, MQ means medium or average, PQ means poor quality or uh, low quality. As you can see, each category has a different protein level, fat level, histamine, free fatty acids, peroxide value, pepsin digestibility, and ash. Which grade of fish meal are you targeting today? HQ, MQ, or PQ? If you are aiming for uh, medium quality or low quality, we don't need a webinar today because you can immediately replace medium quality or low quality fish meal with uh, some other alternatives. But today, I wanna aim for high quality fish meal. Okay, what kind of functions fish meal has? It has proteins and amino acids, highly digestible, good balance of amino acids, Essential fatty acids like uh, DHA, EPA, unsaturated fatty acids, some species as cholesterol, phospholipids, unidentified compounds that enhance feed intake and growth, vitamins like uh, choline, very expensive nutrient in the formulations, right? Choline, biotin, vitamin B12, together with fat-soluble vitamins, and the minerals, and nucleotides. So you are seeing the, a kind of a composition of fish meal, okay? Compounds or composition of fish meal. Okay, first of all, good protein amino acid source. It has good amount of essential amino acids and high digestibility, essential fatty acids, DHA, EPA, unsaturated fatty acids, but only marine fish, okay? 
freshwater fish may not have those EPA DHA. Biogenic means cholesterol, vitamins and minerals, phospholipids or lysophospholipids, and the low kilodalton peptides, which means low molecular weight peptides, and arcanitin and nucleotides. In order to be qualified as a fish meal replacement, in my opinion, this replacement should contain a nutrient profile and the function comparable to fish meal. Number two, they have to show the same performance in terms of daily gain, feed intake, survivability, and fillet quality, meat quality, egg quality. And lastly, those substitutes should be economical alternative to fish meal. Okay, as you all know, vegetable proteins has lower performance than fish meal, mainly because of less apparent digestibility coefficients, particularly in swine and poultry, and also maybe lower nutrient absorption rate, intestinal damage due to the anti-nutritional factors, and vegetable protein source are deficient in one or more essential amino acids, and also they have anti-nutritional factors, antigens like glycinin and beta glycinin and, and uh, Tryptophan inhibitor and so on. And also, pr vegetable proteins are less palatable than fish meal. Now, do we really need fish meal in swine and poultry diets? What do you think about this? As far as I know, some companies, they are still using certain amount of fish meal in young like a uh, first part of a uh, broiler diet and the layer diet and uh, nursery pigs, phase one and phase diet after weaning. Some companies three, five percent. So I had a chance to talk to a uh, renowned poultry nutritionist, Dr. Jose Abin. By phone, he said that Hey, Daniel, without any doubt, fish meal is great protein source, but it is not an indispensable source of protein for poultry diets. As a swine nutritionist, I want to echo what Dr. Avin said. I don't think fish meal is absolutely necessary protein source for swine diets either. As I showed you, fish meal contains lots of uh, compounds and also they have multifunctions. Therefore, in my limited experience, we cannot replace fish meal with one or two ingredients or feed additives. Why do we use fish meal in winning pig diets after winning young pig diets, particularly first week and the second week after winning? Because fish meal is highly palatable, maybe because of a nucleotide, we are not so sure about it. And the high dense nutrient protein source. And also fish meal has very good balance of amino acids, not only essential, but also non-essential amino acids. It has good amount of vitamins, minerals, and omega-3 fatty acids. 
there are some unknown gross factors. We don't know what they are. And also lower allergic reaction in early winning pigs compared to other vegetable protein sources like a soybean meal, canola meal, and other oil seed meals. What about fish meal and poultry diets? As I showed you about 40, 30 years ago, particularly early broiler diets and the layer diets, they had invariably 5% fish meal in those diets, even as much as 10%. We don't, we, we don't know still why they used five or 10%. But we may have some best guess here, maybe because of better disease resistance, improved fertility for both in males and females, and it may have a nutritional value of X for humans improved or increased through deposition of the omega-3 fatty acids, e, e, DHA, and EPA. As you know, commercial X, they have 30, 3, 0, 2, 1, omega-6 to omega-3 ratios. But omega-3 enriched X, they have 4 to 1, 3 to 1, even 2 to 1, depending on the, how much fish oil or flexed oil or flexed itself you are using. Yeah, of course, fish meal is a major protein source used for aquaculture fees because of uh, well-digested and essential amino acids, such as lysine, methylene, tryptophan, threonine, and valine. And also it has uh, uh, essential I mean, uh, fatty acids and omega-3 fatty acids, similar to the immune system, stimulate vitality. And also fish meal has low molecular weight peptides. It contains good level of nucleotides. And also they have biogenic amines. As you know, bio, biogenic amines act as a hormones that will negatively influence animal performance. If you have high biogenic amines, gross performance will be sacrificed so that fish meal should be well stabilized by an eye accident like adoxkin, PHA, PHT. And also it has carnitine, which is similar to liver function. It has phospholipids and the lysophospholipids, cholesterol. I learned from aquaculture nutritionist, shrimp and the potentially carnivorous fish require cholesterol around 0.3%. And also it is highly available minerals like calcium and phosphorus. Okay. Animal needs omega-3 fatty acids to balance immune response of omega-6 fatty acids. As you know, high omega-3, omega-6 fatty acids is linked to inflammation, mainly because arachidonic acid is the precursor of pro-inflammatory lipid medi mediators. And also omega-3 fatty acids has some multi-benefits like a less infection, less skin problems and improved growth and feed efficiency and improved immunity. So aquaculture nutritionists today said that it is not so difficult to reduce fish meal from the diets of Carnivorous or maybe omnivorous. But 
it is not easy to remove or reduce fish meal from carnivorous fish and crustaceans. In general, plant protein sources are of lower nutritional value than fish meal. Aquaculture research says up to 50% of fish meal protein can be replaced by plant proteins, even in carnivorous fish diets. Yeah, so even has been one of the most studied alternatives to fish meal, but it has several limitations like anti-nutrition factors. So plant protein significantly alters gut the microbial composition and uh, gut the health. There are several alternative protein sources to fish meal, which has a similar digestible amino acids and crude protein levels. For instance, canola protein concentrate, about 67% crude protein. They have a similar amino acid composition as fish meal, poultry byproduct meal, or poultry offer meal. Spray dried plasma protein, blood meal, red blood cells, soy protein concentrate, isolated soy protein, rice protein concentrate, wheat gluten meal, corn gluten meal, hydrolyzed feather meal, and the hydrolyzed yeast. Cheese byproduct, which contains about 42% milk protein and 20% milk fat. Egg protein, of course, very expensive, okay? I don't want you to replace fish meal with egg protein. It's very expensive. Yeast, like a hydrolyzed yeast, microalgae, and the insect protein. I'm going to spend a little bit more time for uh, microalgae and the insect protein in this webinar. Insect protein may play an important role as a sustainable alternative to fish meal. Single cell protein. Single cell protein refers to the dried cells of microorganisms such as yeast, bacteria, fungi, and microalgae. It has good amount of amino acids, vitamins, minerals, and energy. You are seeing some strains of single cell protein, okay? Microalgae, yeast, bacteria, prostitutes, prostitutes, crude protein, microalgae 60 to 70, yeast 40 to 50, bacteria 50 to 80. If you look at the characteristics, the third column, microalgae and pro protists contain omega-3 fatty acids, which is big advantage of microalgae and the protists. Algae meal, algae are a class of organisms that live in water and uh, perform photosynthesis. As you know, algae has been part of the human diet for thousands of years. Annual production is about 9,000 metric tons. Okay, algae grow so fast. Algae can double their numbers every few hours and can be harvested basically daily. Algae can become price competitive because of a continuous technology improvement and the lower production cost. Depending on the specific species of algae, cell fraction, and the processing methods used, microalgae contain variable concentrations of protein, lipids, and the carbohydrates. In general, algae contains 40 to 60% crude protein, 
two to six percent crude fat. And some strains contain even 39% of EPA and the 30 to 40% of DHA. It contains carotenoids such as astaxanthin. Astaxanthin is a natural pigment and the possesses powerful antioxidant properties. And also it contains beta glucans that are beneficial to the gut health. You are seeing amino acid profile of, of conventional protein sources and the microalgae. Okay, soybean meal, fish meal, three strains of algae. As you can see, no big difference at all. Some strain contains numerically higher concentrations of amino acids. Insect protein. Insect protein is fast growing sustainable market. Market has a potential to reach 1 million tons in 2027. As you, as may, many of you may know, ADM, Illinois, US based company, and InnovaFeed announced a couple of days ago, announced to build the world's largest insect protein production facility in Decatur, Illinois. So insect protein is applied into three areas. Number one, animal nutrition, like aquaculture fees, pet foods, and uh, swine and poultry animal diets. And the pharmaceuticals and cosmetics and uh, human consumption. I know uh, some areas, people they are eating insect protein already, but not so popular in, in the US and Western Europe. But do you think insect protein will be popular food for human in the future? I don't know, but I am positive on this because in the 19th century, shrimp and uh, lobster were considered unsuitable food for people. But now lobster is a delicacy. Okay, 10 to 15% maggots improve the carcass quality and gross performance of uh, broiler chickens. Maggot meal could replace fish meal in broiler diets based on technical and economical, economic criteria. Insect meal could replace 25 to 100% of the soybean meal and the fish meal in the animal's diets, FAO scientists said. 50% of fish meal can be replaced by insect protein in Pacific white shrimp. The aroma and the texture of fish did not change when they were fed on black soldier fly larva. You are seeing nutrient composition of the uh, some strain, strains of in insect protein as comparing with uh, soybean meal and fish meal. As you can see, fish meal contains a little bit more crude protein, but fish meal has significantly lower fat concentration as compared to other in insect proteins. Lysine and other amino acids, no big difference at all between fish meal and the silkworm poofer meal, for instance. Okay, silkworm poofer meal has 60% crude protein, but after fat extraction, 
we say defatted silkworm pupae meal has a 75.6% protein, actually higher protein than fish meal. What about the fattiest composition? Look at the black soldier fly larva, 49.3% fish oil zero. Although fish oil contains more, more EPA, DHA, of course, yes. And also linolenic acid, yes. But in this case, 49.3% lauric, of course, used swine manure as sub substrate. Depending on the substrate, you may have different lauric and the uh, various the composition. In this case, swine manure used as a substrate. As you know, lauric acid is main fatty acid of medium chain fatty acid, C12, around 50%. So medium chain fatty acids has a strong antiviral, antimicrobial activities. So that MCFA is used as a alternative to antibiotics. What about the digestibility of insect protein? Huang Bo, 2009, he said, digestibility of most amino acid in two studies was around 90% or greater in poultry side. What about the house fly bagus? Digestibility of protein and essential amino acids is similar to fish meal, but much better than the soybean meal. What about crude fat digestibility? Soybean meal 73% in this specific trial. Black soldier fly larva meal has 83.6%, which is significantly higher fat digestibility than soybean meal. Possible functional properties of insects may facilitate the use of insects as a feed ingredient. Insects may produce antimicrobial peptides to protect themselves from microbial infection. These peptides may also be functional in pigs and poultry. We don't know yet, okay? We are not sure yet, but we guess. Chitin can enhance immune response in kelp groupers. Okay, black soldier fly larva has about 5.4% chitin. Yellow mealworm larva, 2.8%. Okay, regulatory agencies are concerning about potential safety risks, including the possibility that insects might accumulate environmental toxins or even transmit diseases to the farm animals that eat those insect proteins. Euro European Food Safety Authority released their report said the risks depend on the insect species used. CPC, canola protein concentrate. I'm paying attention to this substitute. CPC has, as I told you earlier, similar crude protein level as fish meal. According to the trial data, no significant difference in growth of salmon fed 0% CPC and 10% CPC diet. And also interestingly enough, there was no difference in amino acid digestibility between two protein sources. In actually swine, fish meal has better amino acid digestibility than canola protein concentrate, but I don't know why. In aquaculture, no difference in amino acid digestibility. 
Now you are comparing fish meal and the CPC. Look at it. Very much the same. Crude protein, lysine, methionine, and threonine. Okay. Give me uh, five more minutes, okay? There are some key ingredients of fish meal replacement. First of all, there are some protein sources which contains good amount of nucleotides. For instance, krill meal, squid meal, shrimp meal. I learned from aquaculture specialist. They said krill meal, squid meal, and the shrimp meal are used as a attractants in a, in a fish and shrimp. I tested krill meal, skid meal, and shrimp meal in a young pig diets. Unfortunately, I could not see any promising results from those attractants used in aquaculture diets. It didn't work out in swine side. I still don't know why. Okay, fish meal, squid meal, and shrimp meal, krill meal are rich in chemical compounds such as free amino acids, nucleotides, and nucleosides that are readily recognizable to the chemosensory systems of shrimp in the process of locating and uh, ingesting, ingesting food. And also poultry byproduct meal has some nucleotides, whey, nucleotides, and also hydrolyzed yeast, for instance, GrowFlo has 8% nucleotides. As you all know, nucleotides are a building blocks of DNA and RNA and improve palatability and improve gut health. The health benefits of nucleotides have been well established in humans and they have been added to human infant formulas for decades. Infants fed milk formula fortified with nucleotides had been responses to immunization as evidenced by an increase in humoral antibody response. Nucleotides have been shown to enhance the immune system after dietary, dietary supplementation in pigs. Nucleotides have been shown to increase the number of macrophages and the lympho lymphocytes and the increased activity of lymphocytes. Nucleotides improves peak performance in, from several papers. The effect is particularly pronounced in the first week after weaning, reducing diarrhea. Fishes fed nucleotide supplemented diets generally have shown enhanced resistance to viral, bacterial, and the parasitic infection. Somebody said, some fish nutritionist said, additional nucleotide is required for tilapia fed with the low fish meal diet. They gave how much nucleotide is needed actually. Dietary nucleotides at the 120 to 200 ppm enhances immunity and survival of tilapia. Okay, we need to think about nucleotides like hydrolyzed yeast, attractants and palatability enhancer. You know, aquaculture side, they are using two to five percent attractants. We need to use a synthetic amino acids, particular L type. L-type is more palatable, and the phospholipids and nice phospholipids and the low uh, molecular weight peptides like hydrolyzed yeast and fermented soybean meal. Okay, here is what I'm thinking. 
one single fish meal replacement cannot replace fish meal. As I told you, because fish meal has several functions, several compounds. That is why in my limited experience, we may have at least three or four different milk replace, uh, fish meal replacements, like a carnivorous fish, omnivorous, herbivorous, and shrimp, and the swine and poultry. For instance, the shrimp, they need attractants like a krill meal, a squid meal, and uh, shrimp head meal, but we don't need them in swine and poultry, right? That is why we don't need cholesterol in swine and poultry, even though they, you know, carnivorous shrimp, they may need cholesterol, but we don't need cholesterol in swine and poultry side. That is why we need a different, you know, composition of uh, fish meal replacements. Okay, in order to improve palatability, as I showed you, krill meal, shrimp head meal, skid meal, skid river meal, condensed fish solubles, hydrolyzed yeast. It works in aquaculture, but also works in swine diets as well, in my, in my personal experience. Algae meal, cod liver oil meal, marine, marine fish oils, fish protein hydrolysis, and L-type amino acids. Now, how to improve palatability of diets in young pigs? As I show you, showed you, those fish attractants didn't work out in swine. We may use saccharin, stevia, co-products, nucleotides, sucrose, lactose, de dextrose, even sucrose, and others. Now, when you are thinking about the vegetable protein source as a alternatives, we need to understand that Vegetable protein sources have lower palatability, lower digestibility, lower nutrient observability, maybe lower functionalities. And also we need to protect the intestines from the infection. Okay, existence of soybean antigens like a glycine and beta conglycine could induce gut inflammation, reshape, the community of gut microbiota and cause digestive dysfunction, ultimately leading to impaired growth. We need to overcome shortcomings coming from vegetable protein sources. So we may, may cause enteritis in fish as well. So when you are considering vegetable protein source, I think we need to think about, we may need to think about NSP enzymes like xylanase and beta melanase and so on in order to in improve digestibility. What about lysophospholipids to increase nutrient absorption? Nutrient absorption. LPL lysophospholipids has four key functions. Number one, nutrient absorption in answer. Number two, wound healer and protects intestines from infection and the emulsifier. Lysophospholipids improves digestion and absorption of nutrients because lysophospholipids increases membrane fluidity. As you can see, as you know, phospholipids present in uh, lecithin, for instance, they have a phospholipids, but lysophospholipids are different from phospholipids Phospholipids has one head and one, two legs. Lysophospholipids has one head and one leg, not the two legs, one leg. They have more space and also increased fluidity of uh, cell membrane. That is why lysophospholipids improve absorption of nutrients. I learned from medical doctor, uh, well-known medical doctor, I talked to him. He said, young, healthy young youth, they have around 95% absorption, nutrient absorption. What about in pigs and poultry? According to the published papers, around 85%. In other words, we have still a lot of room to improve nutrient absorption. So by improving absorption of nutrients, we can expect formula cost reduction as well. Newborn animals are susceptible to infection because low total blood LPC, 
rice phosphatidyl choline levels cause a decrease in protection against infection and also stimulates immune cells and protect from infection. And finally, promotes wound healing, particularly in winning pigs, so that we can maintain good the morphology of the intestines, like uh, filous height, crypt depth, depth, and uh, absorption area. Thank you so much for your attention.